Hey everybody, it's Rob here. We just had a long developer live stream and I think this really marks a turning point for Diablo 4. We have so much stuff to get into. They talked about the dates, they talked about item crafting, we're finally getting that. They talked about the class balance, they talked about new and challenging endgame systems. We're actually getting a form of rifts in the game. And if you see all the gameplay here that we're also going to be showing in this video, and I'm going to be linking in the description, um, they actually zoomed out the game a lot further. Like you can see here um, how Contact. cool it looks in, in terms of the zoom level. Like they actually zoomed out, I think it's about like 20% extra like zoom out level. So that is really cool. It's a requested feature that has been uh, many people uh, excited and uh, yeah there's basically uh, four different segments and this is just a quick overview video because that thing was two hours long and I'm gonna make more videos uh, here in the next days talking about each different segment in more details so we have the PTR we have the items and the item crafting we have a bunch of balance changes and we have the new endgame systems that include uber uber bosses and the pit so first of all, let's start here with the overview about the times. So next week, there's a patch, March 26th, we're going to get Rage Racing. There's going to be a new block coming up. Then we have the public test server. This is like a test server where you can take a new character and you can test all these changes, everything that's coming. And you can already play it on April 2nd here. It's probably going to be in the launcher. I'll show this to you here with um, the Diablo 3 version. So there's usually a slot here, like you can just say in development, there's going to be a public test realm and you can probably download it here. So this is going to happen in two weeks on April 2nd. And they are wanting a lot of feedback. They're actually making a specific forum for the PTR feedback. And um, the season, season four, where this all this is coming to the live game after the PTR. So we have the um, PTR for a week from the 2nd to the uh, 9th. But it's going to run for a week. And then it's going to take them another four weeks though, until May 14th. So the season is delayed by about a month to implement more feedback and work on these systems even more. So that's going to happen. Um, we'll go through their uh, presentation as they talked a lot about um, all the different things here and starting with the PTR, I think it was. So the way it will work, you can um, basically make a new character but uh, there's going to be some uh, speed progression. So I think when you make the character, you'll instantly be boosted to level 100. You start with 100 million gold. This is on the PTR only. You start with 1,000 Oberlords. You have everything completed. You have all your glyphs at max level. And I think you also have um, the Altar of Lilith and uh, all your progression and all your renown unlocked, basically. Um, you will still need to farm some items like legendaries and, and ubers but the legendary drop rates are going to be doubled and you're going to start with like a random set of rare gears and everything so you'll be like mashed but you still have to farm the legendaries because they are changing the complete item system which we're going to talk about now so um they also want feedback you know on the progression of like how you obtain these items and how all that stuff is going to work so in general and you can see some of the item examples here. I'm going to go uh, back and forth a bit um, because they showed all this as well. So they are basically upgrading the base items. So if you look in here, this is how an item currently looks. And uh, you know, they are like summarizing and simplifying a lot of these stats. Like if you have damage to frozen, damage to crowd control, damage to slowed, like all that stuff or damage on Tuesdays, like all that stuff is going to be, um, you know, a bit simplified and um, there's going to be like less affixes but more meaningful affixes so quality over quantity and you're gonna have um, starting out with three affixes on an item but you will be able to craft on that item with multiple systems and later on you're gonna get a total of five affixes if you uh, go through all this uh, crafting uh, process that we got to talk about here um, so first of all this is how your item starts now it's gonna have higher stats than usual it's also going to be um, only three stats, basically. And um, they are changing a lot of stuff to... Here we go. Open this in the sheet. I took screenshots of everything, basically. I'm going to link this below as well, so you can see kind of my notes as we went through. So this is like before, after. And then you can do additional upgrades. So um, legendary items will always be 
925 if you get them at level 95 monsters. So if the monster is level 95 or higher, they will always be 925. You don't have to do Duriel anymore to get your 925 loot. You will get it anywhere in the open world. Also, you have um, Forgotten Souls here dropping from bounty caches. There is a gold cap now on rerolling, so it can't cost infinite gold anymore to reroll something. So that is pretty cool. There's a cap now. We don't know exactly what the cap is, probably about 10 million or something. And uh, yeah, elites also can drop Forgotten Souls. So you don't have to do, you know, hours and hours of Hellside. There's also changes to Hellside coming that we will talk about in a bit. Um, and then one of the biggest changes, before we start more about the crafting and the journey you can take your item on, um, you will be able to trade legendary and unique items. So both of them. You can't trade uber uniques, but you can trade all the items that you find and all the uniques that you find except uber uniques. And so this is gonna open like a wide majority on the trade market. Like all your items with an exception of like five items, six items in the game will be tradable. So that's pretty cool. Like a bunch of more changes here with material caps. They summarized and made it a lot easier to acquire like flowers for crafting and stuff. They also talked about the uh, Codex of Power. Um, so you can basically just salvage your item. Now you can see the screenshot here. If you just salvage your item, it will become a variable uh, in the Codex of Power. So this is going to be like a very easy system. And if you salvage a max roll, you basically have the max roll in the Codex of Power variable as many times as you want. They also said that um, when you're leveling, the Edge Master, for example, will drop with a, a lit, little bit of a lower roll. And only in World Tier 4 or higher can you get the max roll of 20%. Yeah, you can trade all of them. Like, you can trade every item in the game, but uber uniques now. Um, then they also introduced the crafting system. This is called tempering. So it basically allows you to add a new, uh, two new affixes to your gear. And they actually showed us a video here. I will show this to you as well. Um, this You need tempering recipes for this, basically. So these just drop in the game. Like, this is how they look. And then you can get one out of four uh, stats here. Let me see if I can uh, quickly find this. Because they were like showing this. Okay, this is like the Codex of Power. And then here is the tempering process. Here are like the different recipes. So there is, I don't know, like a lot of these recipes. And whenever you craft an affix on an item, you get one out of these. Like when you temper an item, you get one out of these recipes. I'll make a detailed video about this again. And you can see here, this is like kind of how the UI looks for that. So this is like the item before the change. So I just have three affixes. And then if you temper it, it's gonna go up to five affixes. And there's actually some cool new item stats as well. You can see here, for example, there is gonna be charge cooldown reduction, or I thought also evade cooldown reduction and things you can't get right now. There is also new base affixes. Um, I think they mentioned fury per second which is going to be pretty cool for Bob's. There's also going to be life on hit and just all different kinds of things. Um, they will have a full blog post out about this stuff next week. And I wanted to quickly show you the process here. So this is how it's going to look in game. So you see here you have like the different materials. So we can actually look through a couple here. You have this is like for rogues. You have damage per combo points and stuff. See so you have shadow step damage, dash damage, imbue damage, trap damage, marksman. And he's actually um, crafting on one of these bows now. So he's adding affixes. And you can see here there is durability duration. So you can only craft on an item up to five times. So he tempers the item now. It costs um, red crystals and some mats, but no gold. And this is the tempering process. Boom. An affix has been added. Now he's added marksman damage uh, to this bow. So it got plus one affixes. And that's how the item is looking now. So instead of three, you now have four affixes. And you can do this. He puts the item in. He can do it again with any um, plan that he wants. So there's the different plans. Like you can do double offensive on a weapon, for example. But you can't do mobility on a weapon, obviously. Because mobility goes on boots, as you guys know. So that's a pretty cool system. So we're starting with three stats. And we can add up to two more stats for a total of five. So that's basically the base crafting. And there's going to be a lot of interesting new affixes that you can add. 
Then we have another system which is affecting the items, which is called Greater Affixes. So whenever you find a legendary, which is now tradable, also if it has a greater affix, there is a chance it rolls a greater affix. And if it rolls a greater affix, it's basically like a primal roll. Like you get a higher stat roll. You know, normally, let's say this example here that they showed, normally you can only get up to 84 dexterity. But if you get a greater roll, I'm just going to call it a primal roll, it rolls 50% higher, so up to 126 dex. And this can happen on each item. It's marked on the item with a little uh, two, you know, like a one affix, like two affixes have the uh, greater affix. So you'll be looking for a crafting base that is gonna be a legendary item with 925 with three out of three um, greater affixes. So it's going to be like three primary rolls, a pri primary rolls basically, that you can then start crafting on as a base. Oh yeah, and not only legendaries, but uniques can also roll with greater affixes. You, again, I'm going to make a separate detailed video because it gets pretty complicated. So unique items can also get the greater affix. You can get, and go in-game again, you can get a Shako with probably 15% cooldown reduction that you can then upgrade even further. And probably it's not that much because I think the base is seven and the upgrade is going to disappear. But you can basically uh, get insane stats and you can upgrade all these stats again with another system that we'll talk about it here in a second called Masterworking. Now it's, it's completely nuts actually, like what you can do. Like you can basically take your item on a full journey and it's also going to be very rare and I'm pretty sure that these uh, three out of three um, greater FX rolls, legendaries, or uniques, I mean, a shako can't be traded, but let's say you get, um, I don't know, you get like a good a GG roll Tybert's Will with three out of three greater affixes. You can put those probably on the uh, trade market for 10 billion gold because, uh, yeah, it's like an item that many people want and uh, it's probably going to have a lot of value. And then also like, you know, you need a max roll on the secondary as well. So it's going to be a true item hunt and there's going to be a really big trading economy about this kind of stuff. But that are, that are the greater affixes. And they also mentioned you can't roll, you can't re-roll a greater affix or a non-greater affix into a greater affix, for example. So you need to actually find the item and then start crafting on it. Um, then we have a next process here called Masterwork. And this will replace the current upgrade process from the blacksmith. So Masterwork, basically you can upgrade up to 12 times on an item. So you can upgrade any affix 12 times, um, but you it's RNG which one you hit. So whenever you start master working an item, and there's already, this can also be a strategic decision, right? You might wanna master work the item before you craft on it. It depends on which stats you want to upgrade. Because you only hit one every time you master work, it hits one of the stats on the item. So obviously, if you have already upgraded it to five affixes, it's a one in five. But yeah, I'm gonna touch on this like separately because it gets pretty complicated. But in the end, you can upgrade an item up to 12 times and it hits a random affixes. And uh, the process looks like this in the end, like this is an item that has multiple rolls on the maximum health, basically. So you, you have a lot of RNG, like, uh, I mean, it's a... Uh, you know, one in five, and then you need to hit this like 12 times in a row. But you can probably create an item. Let's say I do this on my Harlequin's Crest. I already um, have, and this works for Uber Uniques and normal Uniques as well. So I already have a cooldown reduction, and then I can master work it even further on here. So it can be a greater FX cooldown reduction, which is probably going to get it to, I don't know, somewhere about 10, 12% cooldown, and then you can also master work on it and i believe they mentioned you can get 25 percent extra bonus per four ranks of master working so you can probably get a harlequin's crest with like somewhere between 25 to 30 percent cooldown reduction i mean i'm not sure like about the numbers we will see when we have the the real numbers in the blog post next week again i'll make an updated video but it's pretty interesting and it's gonna it's already very hard to find uh, an uber unique but now you gotta find it basically with a greater FX and then also master work on it. So it's going to get pretty insane. But there is an easier way to get Uber Uniques that we will get to in a second. It has to do with the new endgame system. Um, yeah, new FX, we talked about that. 
Actually, let's before we hit on class balance, let's quickly talk about one of the endgame systems that they are doing. So they are overhauling the entire game, basically. There is, um, before we get into class balance, because I think it fits better, uh, they are increasing, they're increasing the experience. So World Tier 2 is going to get 50% experience, World Tier 3, 150, and World Tier 4, 250. I think this is increased by another 50% uh, currently. And um, they are changing Hell Tides. So, so Hell Tides is going to get a lot more density. There's going to be a threat meter. There's going to be uh, elites ambushing you. Let me see if I can... Uh, quickly find I think here yeah so you can see this is like them playing Hellfire and you see the beautiful zoomed out mode so you see there's like a threat meter on the right side here and there's like a bunch of new things happening and whenever this uh, threat meter fills I think it's gonna happen here in a second yeah you can see here there is a kind of like a an ambush happening and then there is a bunch of elites that spawn and in general the health has a lot more density and look at this beautiful zoomed out mode Dude, it's so good. And as we watch here, I will just keep explaining it. So there's basically an ambush of monsters. And you get a bunch more uh, enemies and you get a bunch more loots. We got a bunch more forgotten souls. It's going to be a lot easier. They also drop uh, new materials. There's a new boss called Blood Maiden. It's a new public event boss that's going to happen in the Helltide. We don't see it here. And there's new mini events. You, can, you, you saw earlier in the footage, like a bit down, that there was like a big... Yeah, here, this big thing, this is like new mini events and stuff. So there's a lot more stuff going on. And after you um, survive this ambush and you killed all the elites, you are also getting a new uh, uh, crafting material for the uh, Zer vampire boss as well. So that is pretty cool. And um, they also talked about new uber bosses coming to the game. I think they showed Andariel. I'm not sure where the footage exactly was. But there's like a new endgame boss. It's going to be Uber and Daryl coming to the game. Oh, it's going to be pretty sick. You know where we saw? Okay, this is already the pit. I think it was a bit before. But like, we basically saw them uh, fight and Daryl. So there's like a new Uber version of and Daryl. She's going to have the same loot table as Uber Duriel. And on top of this, you will also be able to spawn an Uber Uber version. Or like, I think they call it a tormented version of each Uber boss. So you can probably spawn an Uber Uber Duriel with materials that you get from the pit, which is another endgame system. And this is how you get an extremely increased chance of getting Uber Unique. So probably you're not gonna do Duriel runs anymore, like at least not normal Duriel. You're gonna do Uber Uber Duriel, or you're gonna do like Tormented Duriel, or whatever they're gonna call it. And you're gonna do Tormented and Daryl for those uh, Uber Uniques with the uh, greater affixes and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming. And then before we talk about the Rift endgame system, I quickly want to hit on class balance. So they talked a lot about upcoming class balance. There's also going to be new items coming to the game. Like this is an Uber Unique um, that they are kind of introducing, which is uh, Two Rails Might. And it looks pretty cool. And there's just in general like a bunch of class balance here. You can see it here. This is Two Rails Might. So basically, while at full life, I'm immediately thinking about uh, Sorks, for example, that can benefit from this a lot. Uh, your skills unleash a Divine Barrage, dealing extra damage. And this is basically like an artillery shrine. So we're going to farm these new Uber Uber bosses. Um, and I think they mentioned it was a level 200 version of farming them. And you can see here, like at full life, you're basically summoning the artillery shrine arrows. So that's super cool. There's a bunch of new uniques coming to the game as well a barrage of uniques like more than usual they said so uh yeah there's also a bunch of uh bug fixes coming basically um for, and uh nerfs and changes so like they mentioned here they're going to change tybert's will it's going to do reduced damage now obviously this one was maybe a bit too strong tybert's will already had a crazy multiplier they are changing charge. They didn't say by how much, but they just buff charge. And charge buff is one of the most uh, popular uh, skills right now. And uh, they're also going to change Hoda Hammer of the Ancients. They, they said uh, they're going to nerf it a bit. So charge is going to get a nerf. Hammer of the Ancients is going to get a nerf. And they are also nerfing Banished Lord Talisman, the amulet. And they're also nerfing Unbridled Rage. We don't have any exact numbers. So it's a bit too early to judge. But uh, all these are going to be tuned down a bit because uh, they are quite strong at the moment so 
a barb on this part is going to get a bit of a nerf, but for that they're also buffing a lot of stuff and they're introducing a lot of things. So what they mainly talked about is making these flat generic um, damage bonuses that we have in the game scale better. So you know like all these like dust devils and these kind of stuff um, that has not really been used so much. They are buffing it a lot. Uh, for example, you can see here, this is a double swing barb. So basically at the beginning it was you cast a double swing every second attack, a dust devil on a double swing every second attack. And now you cast a double swing dust devil every attack and you cast three of them every second attack. So it's essentially a times four buff for those dust devils. And they also made these flat damage values scale with your weapon damage. So the more weapon damage that you have, and if you're switching your weapon, the value on this will also change. So that's going to be potentially like a tornado. Maybe we can even make a whirlwind build. Hopefully they have some whirlwind buffs. Uh, we did, they didn't talk about all of this, but uh, on Barb, you can basically know Charge is going to get nerfed, Hammer is going to get nerfed, Umbral is going to get nerfed, Damage Reduction is going to get nerfed, the base damage reduction is just completely removed on Barb. Uh, we have a Tablet's Will nerf and a Banished Lord Talisman nerf. But a bunch of buffs to like flat damage. And yeah, new, new items, there's a cool Frozen Orb item here, there's a bunch of buffs to the Necromancer, some crazy stuff on Druid as well. And item changes, just a lot. I'm probably going to make a separate video. They talked about Hardcore, there's not going to be any more Cheat Death Elixirs, there's not going to be any more Cheat Death. So there's some pretty cool stuff coming, and uh, even though if we get Hoda and Charge Nerf, there's definitely going to be, you know, other very viable builds. And I mean, you gotta admit, guys, like, you know, Hoda and Charge, we've been hitting for billions and billions and billions to, talk, to quote Donald Trump here. So there was a lot of damage, yes? And then last but not least, at least for the summary, I'm going to make separate videos again. There is the new endgame system called The Pit. So let me jump uh, to the section here where they showcase this. So it's basically Abattoir of Zir making a comeback, but they made it better. They made it more challenging and they made it way more rewarding. So there's this new system here called the Pit. You're starting from Nightmare Dungeon 45. And you can insert like... A I think it was some stones that you get um, in the open world. You collect them and then you can start interacting with the systems. You can see it's like 500 of this uh, material here to open it. And it starts at monster level 100 at tier 1. And I think they said this is going to go up to 200 or 250. So you can probably expect, and this is tiers, not monster levels. So you can probably expect monster levels like, again, we don't know, but north of uh, 200, maybe even up to 300. And the way I understood it, this is supposed to be, you know, a system where you can't reach the maximum tier. We'll see about that. We'll test it on the PTR. But yeah, there's basically like this obelisk in town, like a rift obelisk. You, you open it and then it opens the rift, which is called the pit here. Like there's still some placeholders here. Like you click it, you enter the rift and then you can see you have 10 minutes time. Um, you need to defeat the guardian at the end before the timer ends. And if you die, unlike in Abattoir of Zir, you died run was over no now you just get a time penalty so you die you can probably revive at your corpse they didn't show us but you get a time penalty of 30 seconds so this is basically greater rift you see he's slaying monsters and the zoom out mode is beautiful and uh, there's also different floors so there's also shrines apparently so you got a blast wave shrine here so the rng part is still there so you get that conduit and that blast wave shrine probably that's going to scale pretty high on barb and other classes and you can see here, like he's uh, these monsters are level 100, so this is just a tier one. This is the easiest, uh, the easiest uh, pit that uh, you can ever be. And um, we'll talk about the rewards here in a second. There is this is going to be the end game system that that we will have to do because uh, that we will get to enjoy because there is a lot of uh, rewards associated to it. So you can see he's switching the floors. And then I think whenever he reaches 100% progress, like there's elites here, it doesn't have any affixes on them though, so there's not going to be like any lightning chasing you. So you see here you get to the Guardian's Lair, which is also a separate instance. So this was a kind of negative from my side, because you have three loading screens in the middle. And I think then they got to show the boss fight here. So there's like a boss fight. There can also be some random events. I think they even mentioned that there's like an echo of Lilith that can spawn like in the middle of the run. So there is, it's not always linear. Like there can be like some random events and some big stuff and exciting stuff happening basically. But yeah, you get to fight this guardian and once you defeat the guardian, you get a bunch of loot. 
you get this Stygian stone. This stone is required to enter the or to open the Uber Uber Duriel or the Uber Uber Enderiel. And maybe maybe even other bosses will also have their like Uber Uber version or tormented version. We don't know. You get a bunch of legendaries. This is gonna these are supposed to be ancestrals. And you get this mystic chest. And once he opens this, you get a material. And this is the material that you need to masterwork your items. Quick reminder, masterwork was where you add affixes. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> masterwork where where you um, upgrade affixes. So this is like what is, will be needed to upgrade your gear. And to access the new boss ladder, like the new uber bosses. So um, it's going to be pretty important to, um, you know, get into those rifts and uh, or into the pit and get starting. And there is different materials. So you can see here they're starting out with op duck duckite this is the stuff that dropped here in uh, tier one and as you go higher it's gonna drop ingolith or natrium i don't know i can't pronounce this but uh, like it's gonna drop like basically a base item a rare item and a legendary crafting material and you need the legendary crafting material you know to um like master work your equipment uh, with higher <laughs> chances and with higher rolls so you always want to try to want to do the higher tiers of the pit Neath Iron. Okay. I was like, Neat Tyron. <laughs> All right. So it's iron, basically, from the pit, and you need to master, and this is what you need to master with the equipment. Oh, one thing I forgot when you slay the uber uber bosses, you also get a guaranteed resplendent spark. And they didn't actually say um, if you are crafting, but I would assume that if you're crafting an uber unique, um, that they also have a chance to drop with great affixes, but that's not confirmed. But yeah, you basically get a resplendent spark guaranteed for the first time you kill any of those new uber bosses that you can summon with the rift material that is called, forgot the name, uh, Stygian Stone. So yeah, there's a lot of cool things coming. I'm really looking forward to all this. Uh, again, I'm going to make separate videos about this. They also had like a bit of a Q&A at the end. Um, but we mostly talked about this, like Armory coming soon, Loot Filter coming soon, and we get the full patch notes next week, my friends. But yeah, I'm really excited, I'm really hyped. Obviously, the delay, again, PTR, April 2nd, and the Season 4 launch is gonna be uh, May 14th, so that one is definitely delayed by a month. But I'm still super excited, looking forward to test it all on the PTR and jump into it, test the new crafting, test the new endgame systems, slay the new uber uber or tormented uber bosses, and we'll see how the class balance and other things will affect stuff. Again, next days here you can expect a lot more content onto all these like in detailed uh, new and changed systems that we're getting. Hope you enjoyed all of you guys, I'm gonna link everything, um, the campfire full video in the description. And yeah, I hope I'll see you soon and I'm excited for Diablo 4 again. Let's go. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.